Hello, and welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. I'm your host, Casey Fatchett. If you haven't been listening lately, in addition to bringing you informative and entertaining photography-related content, I am also embarking on a series of adventures with the crew of the Starship Fibonacci. I like to refer to them as my hashtag nerdy photo crew. At the moment, Fibonacci is actually helping me refit my spacesuit because I've been working out. The old one is a little tight. Mm-hmm. Working out. Sure. I am. I can almost do 50 push-ups in a row now. Whatever you say. Hey, less yappy, more suity. I need a good fit in spacesuit if I'm going to venture outside the ship. But speaking of suits, this week's guest is my friend Anthony Collins, and Anthony is back to discuss dressing for success as a photographer or a videographer. More on that after this short break. Hey, hey, watch it with the end scene. Hey, are you looking to add more dynamic content to your marketing? Do you want to drive customers to your website with videos about products, services, or content, but don't have the time to learn video editing software? Head over to nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash Animoto to try Animoto for free. That's right. You can sign up and try it out for free. Just drag and drop your photos and videos or pick from the thousands of stock photos and videos in their library and create a video in just minutes. Customize fonts, colors, and layouts easily or choose from their templates. You also get to select your music from thousands of pre-licensed tracks. Stand out in your customer's social feed. Videos get more likes and shares and click-throughs than any other content. Create videos in landscape, square, or vertical formats depending on which social media platform you are exporting to. Or, once you're done making one video, make a copy and convert it to another format to share on another platform. No need to make separate videos. Animoto is easy, intuitive, and doesn't require learning new software. Get started right away. Go to nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash Animoto. That's nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash A-N-I-M-O-T-O to get started for free. And welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. I am back again with my friend, Anthony Collins. Hey, Casey, how are you? I'm, I'm doing good, Anthony. And today we're going to talk about dressing for success. Now, you and I, I, I guess we could say we're of an older generation. I don't know what, what you would describe us as. We're sort of the veterans of the photography world at this point. Um, but it seems that, uh, we talk about this a lot, that sometimes we see people who don't necessarily dress for the job that they've come to. Um, <laughs> in fact, you know, it tends to be not always, but it tends to be the, the video people that we work with who aren't necessarily dressed appropriately for the gig that we're working at. I mean, have you found that to be the case? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> without painting in broad brushes, yes. Anytime that I've been at a gig and I was taken aback by how someone dressed coming to that professional gig, often, not exclusively but often it was the video guys now look i have a simple rule you dress the way the client dresses for whatever event it is whatever corporate office you're in or wherever you're shooting whatever they wear is what you can wear and that that's that's a fortune 500 photo shoot that's a healthcare photo shoot and that can be a wedding yeah uh, that's the great that's the great bar to start at what they're wearing yeah. what you should be wearing it's a pretty simple bar, too, and you'd think that people would follow that, but it's like, yeah, we had a conversation, I think it was a couple of years ago now, uh, because you had mentioned it to me, you had sent me, like, photos, like, we're, I'm at, like, a black tie event, and this is what the videographer showed up in, and it's, like, a guy in, like, ripped jeans and a t-shirt, and then uh, I had gone to this wedding, and I had spoken to, because I've had these issues before, you know, not just with videographers, but with you know, occasionally with photographers, people that I haven't worked with uh, before, I, I make it clear, like, this is what the dress code is. This is where it starts. It starts at black pants, you know, black button-down shirt. That's where we start from. Um, that's, you know, the minimum that you have to wear, like, 
you know, you're basically you look like you're working backstage in theater. You look like a tech person in the theater. Um, you know, I had a conversation with him. We talked uh, over the phone, and I said, "Hey, listen, this is what you need to wear." He was like, "Cool, that's great." I sent him our, our contract agreement that I have with you know people at my second shooters and you know, associate photographers and videographers that I send them. It clearly states in there this is the dress code. Signs it, sends it back. Shows up the day of the wedding in kind of like kind of crusty jeans and a white t-shirt. Yeah, he's got to go home. <laughs> and I was just like, "What is yeah, wrong?" Yeah, he's got to go home with you. And and I'm sitting there. We're out. We're way out. Way, way, way out on the North Fork of Long Island at this point. And it's so just there's like, nowhere for him to even shop. Dude, yeah, and he like comes into the house like with the bride, and you know he starts shooting. I'm just like what's going on here and my wife who you know you you photographed our wedding um yeah. <laughs> was standing there with me she was assisting me and she's like, look she like her eyes were about ready to pop out of her head and she's looking at me like what's going on here and um i got a moment alone with the guy and i said so did you bring anything else to wear and he looked at me like Huh? And I said, mm. you know, this is a wedding. You're like, do you have other? He's like, oh, yeah, I brought a, a jacket to wear during the the ceremony. And I was like, well, I've got to happen to have an extra dress shirt in my car that you can throw on, and you better put that. You go. And he's like, oh, right now. I'm like, yes, right now. Like, right, wow. right now. Like, <clears throat> just didn't get it. Like, we had this conversation. Like, we specifically talked about this. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that it's even an issue. A, it's unfortunate that you have to tell someone. It's B, that he shows up without it would be a tremendous problem between he and I. Um, if I could, I'm not upset the bride and groom. I'd probably send him home. But if he's the video guy, there's not much you can do because um, you need him there. Um, I, it would be a tremendous problem. I do know that there are venues that will not let you in. And I think we've discussed this before. We've and much not discussed it before in person. Like, you know, it's, yeah, I, I had a wedding, the same thing. They had hired uh, a videographer who uh, showed up in uh, a tank top, like, she was a female, like, basically like a loose, you know, flowy tank top um, in capri pants and flip-flops. And the maitre d', oh, as she was like, yeah, it was, luckily we had, like, after doing portraits, we had some time, and she just shows up at the the door and the maitre d' was like, you can't be in here in that. Right, he's good. Like, what? Good for the maitre d'. Like, he's like, what do, you, what do you mean? And she's like, uh, maitre d's like, yeah, it's a black tie wedding. <laughs> I right. don't know what you're expecting, but you can't wear flip-flops and a tank top. You know, Casey, in all honesty, I don't care if it's a backyard wedding. Yeah. If the bridal party and most of the tuxedos. guests... Yeah, I'd or even just a, even if, if, if they're wearing a, a collared shirt and a blazer, you need to be in a collared shirt and a blazer. I don't want to hear about heat. I don't want to hear about being uncomfortable because we all do it. That's how we work. Yes, and it's, it's just it's just the base. I don't I, look. I go to these corporations. I wear dress shoes, like really nice dress shoes. Would I rather be in my Nikes? Heck yeah. But the guys there, that's how the men and the women. That's how they dress, and that's how you need to dress. It's a level and of professionalism. If, Yes, and if you don't think they notice that, you're wrong because that's why they all dress like that for each other because they all notice it. Now, in a perfect world, does it? should it matter? Maybe not in a perfect world. But this is certainly an imperfect world we live in. If you're going to go <laughs> into fell, business, uh, all the time. Right. If you're going to go into someone's business or to someone's wedding, you better make sure that you've got the dress code down and agreed to. Now, maybe, maybe the bride and groom says to you, yes, it's a hot day, you can wear khakis and just a, a short sleeve shirt, but you better have that from them. Right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, it's something you need to discuss, and I always discuss it beforehand with couples. I mean, like, at one time, I had a couple who said, well, it might be black tie. And I reached out to them and said, is it going to be black tie? And they said no, and then I showed up, and it was, quote-unquote, black tie optional, but I was wearing a suit. Like, yeah. You know, right. And I, that's just kind of my, my standard. My standard is for weddings is I'm going to wear a suit 
no matter what, unless you tell me otherwise. Um, yeah. And, but I just don't, I, I guess I don't understand the mentality of where it comes from, or the point of view of where it comes from, like, either for a wedding, like a wedding is just sort of like, it's a very special day. How would you dress as a guest going to a wedding? Like, exactly. that's the thing. I talk to these people right. and I'm like, what, would you show up if somebody invited you to a wedding? Would you show up wearing that? Like, no. Yeah. no. Like, and it's really, it's not expensive. I get most of my work clothes from like Uniqlo or Old Navy, just simple basic solids. When I go to yeah. a wedding or if I go to a hot corporate event, I bring double dress shirt, double undershirt. So at some point on a break, I can quick change because it's just hot. Um, but man, look, you're getting paid. You got to suck it up and put some clothes on and look nice. Yeah. Uh, that's part of your cost of doing business. Yeah. So yeah, looking I'm professional sorry. and in being professional because otherwise you look like an amateur. Right. And honestly, in my opinion, like, I don't know if like, I, I don't want to rag on videographers. I mean, I, I work, <laughs> I've worked with plenty of videographers who dress very professionally. I, I, and the people that, who I hire who are always dressed like professionals, you know, Except for like, like I said, a couple of times in you know the decades of work that I've been doing this, um, where I've just had some sort of like I needed to hire somebody last minute and I'd never worked with this person before, and they showed up and even though we had the discussion, didn't dress appropriately. But right. For the most part, the people I work with, you know, they dress appropriately for the gig. Right. Yeah, you know, I feel like we're ragging on video people, but it happens all the time. Like we have, we've been it. Well, I worked a gig for you, and this guy walked up. You know, he's, you know, he walked past me and the other photographer that you'd hired to shoot this corporate gig, and I was like, "That's got to be the video guy." And the other guy was like, eh, "You think so?" And I was like, "Yeah, a hundred percent. I know," <laughs> because he was wearing a t-shirt. Like everybody else is wearing suits and ties. You know, like this is like evening gowns. Like he's wearing, uh, you know, a white, like, band T-shirt. Not even just like a oh, solid dear color, God. and like black jeans, and whatever. And he comes back later, in the, later, and he's got like his, he's setting up the video equipment. And I was just like, I knew it, I knew it. And he throws on like this black uh, cardigan over the t-shirt like when the event starts and they're just like come on man like yeah. <laughs> you it gotta does be not, better than that right it does not cost a lot of money to get a jacket a shirt and a pair of pants like you said old navy uniqlo h&m whatever fits you whatever you're comfortable working in um it just doesn't cost a lot of money and it's part of and the and the greatest innovation in the last few years are these sneaker shoes Yes. That are shine up leather on top and maybe white mm -hmm. on the bottom. I have a couple of pairs of those and I love them. They look great with your corporate attire. I will wear them often with a business suit. Um, and so many of my clients now, I was with the CEO of a Fortune 500 company at an event and he was wearing Nikes with his suit. Not even sneakers, <laughs> but Nikes with his suit. So we've come to that where things can get more casual, but it's not skateboard gear yeah not and that's the yet. thing it's like I, I think that you know there's a lot of complaints from people like i want to be taken seriously i want to get paid you know my i would pay my rates and like I, you hear these conversations all the time but then it's sort of like you, you start to ask people like you know oh i want to be a i want to be a high-end commercial photographer or i want to be a high-end wedding photographer or whatever and then you say like well what do you usually wear to a gig and they're like yeah wear my ripped up jeans and my you know right i'm an artist like, i'm an artist this is my <laughs> artist. Like, like well you know you have to dress the part like you have to yeah. dress the for the job you want um yep. as they say i mean there's there's truth to that saying absolutely and it hasn't changed and it may not change our lifetime to be any different than that but for now for today that's what is expected of you you need to figure out a way to look like everybody else, to blend in. And if you can't make that work, then your business is gonna suffer. And that's just my personal opinion. Nobody wants to see you in their corporate office with your trucker hat turned backwards and, and you know, and some ironic graphic on your on the front of your t-shirt. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, they're not there to see you. 
No. You should hide in the background. I've gotten so many gigs because people have said, I didn't even know the photographer was there. Exactly. Yeah, um, and that, that and that's a equi- that's an equipment thing too. Hey, spend the money, get some bigger lenses. Don't stand up front. It's not about you. That's a whole other discussion for another day. Um, but yeah, if they if they don't notice you and they see great work, you're gonna get hired again. Someone's gonna say, who was that person? Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, because they 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 don't want like I said they don't want to they're not coming there to see you. You are not the centerpiece of the event or the shoot. You're there to do a job. Uh. Hey, photographers. The Nerdy Photographer Podcast wants to hear your stories. That's right. If you have an amazing, crazy, funny, heartwarming, or even tragic or disturbing story you've personally experienced as a photographer... We want to hear about it. Go to nerdyphotographer.com and submit your story or stories. It doesn't have to be just one. And we may feature them on the podcast. And if you want, you can tell the story yourself on the podcast. We would love to have you on as a guest. What have you got to lose? Share your photography story with us and see what develops. AF 2.0, why don't you tell the audience what time it is? And now for my favorite part of the show. What's that say? Useless information. Ugh, this is always death. Anthony, because of, I chose this because of videography. Pagonophobia is the fear of beards. Wow, oh, okay, um... And did you I'll know your word for that beards have more bacteria than a dog's mouth? <laughs> I would have to assume that would depend on when. You know, <laughs> I tend to wash. I tend to wash my beard in the morning in the shower with my face. So well, it depends uh, on the dog too. Like when? when it depends on the dog. dog. Yeah. When for the How dog? Many minutes, right. Yeah, how many minutes ago was he just licking his butt? Um, is another thing. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Beards are, are places ripe for um, bacteria, and any body hair, um, without getting too graphic, is ripe for bacteria. <laughs> but you know, wash your face, wash your hands, wash your face, wash get your behind your ears again. like mom said. Wash your hands again. <laughs> I I got into the habit now of, you know, washing your hands for twenty seconds is is hard to do unless you have a task so i wash my hands and then i take and i wash each finger i kind of twist each finger in the opposite palm you know kind of just going 10 fingers that takes about 10 seconds mm-hmm. and that's you know with the hot water on i get each finger and hope for the best I, I keep going recite, I'm, I'm, this is interesting i recite the litany against fear uh from dune so that's that's just me that's what i do which is uh, <laughs> I will not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will turn my inner eye, and I will allow it to pass over me and through me. And afterwards, when the fear has passed, only I will remain. Wow! Every time I recite that, I've usually, that's usually about twenty seconds. That's like a uh, a yoga drishti thing, a yoga thing they say in class when I go to yoga. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, Dune's full of them, man. It's like, uh, you got, what is the other one? Uh, the, the, did you ever watch that movie? Have you ever watched the movie Dune? Not once. David Lynch? Not uh, once. There's another thing where they, there's a group of people that are called Mentats, which are basically like human computers, and they take this, uh, they drink this juice to like help their brains move faster, and they will they could get stains around their mouth. And they'll say, like, uh, it is by will alone that I set my mind in motion. It is by the juice of Sefu that thoughts acquire speed, the lips acquire stain, the stains become a warning. It is by will alone that I set my mind in motion. So, wow. That's, that's some Interesting. Nerdy, that's some nerdy shit right there. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's also You're... a way of just, like, little mantra things that, you know, that for me help. But, yeah, like, it's, that's my yoga. <laughs> I have. That's awesome. Right, Anthony, thank you for being with us again. Really love having you on the program. We'll have to have you back soon.
Casey, I love being here. Thank you for reaching out. You be safe. Wash your hands. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, wash your hands again. And welcome back. Fibonacci refitted my spacesuit, and I have to say, I am looking pretty snazzy. I'd like to thank my friend, Anthony Collins, for being our guest on the show. You can follow Anthony on Instagram at Anthony Collins underscore art. That is Anthony Collins underscore art. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit at The Nerdy Photo. And be sure to tell your friends about this show. Sharing is caring, folks. Tell everyone you know about this podcast, even if they don't care about photography or business or marketing or science fiction or comic books or vague references to movie only five people have ever seen. Until next time, stay safe and stay nerdy. Thank you.